Okay, uh, our next speaker is Stuart Whiting. Uh, Stuart is Director of Club Rooms. Uh, this is the office group's network of drop-in workspaces and lounges in London designed for independent workers, mobile workers, and startups. And I've just been handed a bit of paper. All right. Uh, uh, I thought it was gonna, who was going to win the iPad Mini? Um, uh, so uh, Stuart is going to put another piece uh, in the jigsaw of, of, you know, to go back to John Williams, you know, screw work, let's play, you know, this new army of, of, of freelancers working outside corporate structures, where do they work? So, Stuart. I'm actually going to stay at the Okay, perfect. Let's get the stats so we can get Okay. It's really interesting actually to speak here um, after uh, Julia and Indy, who I think represent really sort of two two very different sides of this co-working uh, model and, and, and what we're seeing going on at the moment. Before I start, I'd actually really be interested to hear, how many of you actually work from a, a co-working space? Anyone? So, a few. Has, and does anyone work for an organization where other people in their organization work from co-working spaces? Another three or four. Um, and has anyone actually looked at building this into the strategy of what they're doing? A few, so a few people have at least looked at it, which is a, which is a good start, I guess. Um, so I just really want to start and say actually how important is co-working? Is this something we should all really be sitting here and, and talking about today? Um, and I think first of all, we, we have to look at is the fact that they're growing. There are more and more of these spaces. If we look at the uh, global co-working survey that Desmag carried out and completed last month, in Europe they're, they're showing that they've grown by 271% um, to 872 over the last two years. And worldwide this number is now over 2,000 spaces. It's worth noting as well that um, this actually only includes spaces that really their primary business function is co-working. So all of the space that Julie's been talking about um, up until now and the space that I'm about to talk about now aren't included in this. So the network of these spaces is actually much, much bigger than just that. And the second thing I think we should really be looking at is that we've been sitting in this room for a while and, and I think all of us have been talking about the importance of the third place. And when we've been talking about that, we've really been looking at uh, coffee shops and... Um, maybe private members clubs, that their primary function isn't working. They're not workspaces. They're spaces that we're trying to actually adapt to do that. And we look at coffee shops, and they're great because they're everywhere. But we've got real issues with trying to find an internet connection, uh, scrubbing around on the floor, trying to plug in a laptop, which is going to take you another five minutes or so, um, security issues, privacy issues that might then go with that. Uh, you then get up and go to the loo, and then someone's nicked your coffee and taken your seat, and you've got to go back to the start, and you try and take a phone call maybe, and there are issues with privacy that go on with that too. Um, and, and again, moving on to private members clubs, where there might be issues where actually you might not be able to use a phone in there, which is, again, not really set up for business. So when we're talking about third places we have been for all this time, actually, maybe potentially co-working space should be the first spaces that we really turn to when we think about that, because they're actually set up and designed for work. Um, so I think, I think really they do show value and they are something we should be paying attention to. Um, as the office group, we're really committing to that as well. We've got one space so far um, at Warmford Court in the city that there are a couple of photographs of on the right-hand side behind me. Uh, but we're also expanding to Paddington Station in the next couple of months, as well as Euston Station near Bond Street uh, Station in the West End as well. Really looking to sort of capitalize on the stations, we've actually uh, just completed a joint venture deal with Network Rail last year to roll out to all the stations across London and potentially beyond that as well, which we really think are important in terms of mobile workers and actually moving this on just beyond um, sort of startups as well in terms of sort of getting these locations for potentially your companies and your clients too. So what is co-working and is it changing? We've, we've heard kind of two different stories potentially uh, so far, which means that the panel debate could be interesting as we move on. I think traditionally, it always really has been uh, maybe community-driven first. And people have sort of come together around a location or around a common theme or interest or, or topic of work. And the space is then sort of followed in behind that as a space really for them to meet and then potentially work from. I think what we're starting to maybe see, um, we've seen that with what Julie's been talking about, and Pierre will talk about it later, and, and with the hub as well, is a, a new type of space that's really coming through that might have led potentially with the workspace. Um, the community is still there, and it's important in terms of the social interactions that might happen in there, but they're actually really being set up as spaces to work, and I think that's really shifted on beyond you know, an open table with a, a table tennis table somewhere and something else going on. These are now really workspaces. Um, whether these new spaces really fall under the co-working term or not, I think is something we're going to debate. Uh, they might not lead so much on the community front, which has always been important, but I think they do play an important part. 
whether we break that off and we now actually start to look at a different category of space outside co-working, uh, or whether we enlarge in the term to, to embrace all of it, I don't know. And maybe something we can talk about. Um, in terms of club rooms, we've very much led with the, the space. We are, we're an office company. Our, our core business has always been office space and, and provision of that. Um, and we've really uh, tried to develop that. It's a mix of open spaces and semi-private spaces and private spaces. And really think about very different companies coming together, still being able to get on with business and uh, benefiting from that buzz that you get from working around other people. So yes, we've got open spaces where you can collaborate with colleagues, but we also have a lot of uh, semi-private space within that as well, some of which you can see behind, which allow you to have that sort of visual privacy and acoustic privacy for work, which is, is crucial and important, but still feel that buzz of what's going on around you in the space as well and the feeling that you're not alone. That's backed up with phone booths for private calls, that's backed up with focus booths, um, which are spaces, almost private offices within that for when you need that space too. And a lot of that's actually been learnt from agile working environments and from a lot of the stuff that you guys have been doing as well. It hasn't really necessarily come from co-working spaces and the development of those. Um, so who's actually using these spaces? I, I think it's much wider than a lot of people might think. I think um, really if we look at certainly from our spaces and what we've got, Yes, we have startups working from those spaces, but we've also got a lot of established independent workers, and we're seeing more and more of people working in this way who are now using these spaces. Um, we're seeing consultancies who need bases between client offices that don't necessarily need a permanent office the whole time. We're seeing our office clients who are based in our buildings across London now have bases all over London they can drop into, and also employees of larger companies. I think one interesting example of that is um, a guy I was speaking to in a space this morning, actually. He works for a large pharmaceutical company based out in Reading. And he's, they've got a home working program and he works from home, but he finds it quite isolating. So he's discovered our spaces and he feels that he's got that buzz of being around other people and he gets a lot more work done there. Interestingly though, he actually pays for the space himself. The company aren't paying for him to go and work there, he's paying. And it's not a huge amount of money, but he's actually really paying for that. And we've talked a lot about bring your own devices and people potentially paying for computers at work. Maybe there's something we can open up. Eventually, do we get to the point that employees might end up being given allowance of money to actually pay for their workspace as well? Maybe a question for later, I'm not sure. And the backgrounds, again, dive. I won't list them, but everything you can think of, we've got people in there doing it. It's not just tech or, or other bits and pieces too, it's very wide. And that mix, I think, is quite healthy in terms of the conversations that could happen. I think um, for the purpose of today's conference, the question we really probably need to ask ourselves, though, is um, how could these spaces work for larger businesses, which I think that, that most of you might be sort of more involved with than, than the smaller startups. And I think it brings us back to the third place question. If we're really considering the first pl third place is important, um, these spaces are there, and they're now being run by legitimate businesses who are there, they're there to stay, they're set up for work, to the point that they could actually maybe now be built into the strategies of um, companies and their workplaces moving forward. And I think we sat here um, a couple of years ago, and Ben Munn from CBRE was speaking about uh, his concept of the new mantle and about uh, new providers providing these additional spaces that might then feed in with that. And I think now, he was talking about maybe this happening in sort of 10 years' time or so, but I think a lot of us are here and these spaces now exist and we're, we're ready to work with people to, to develop them further and see how they can fit in. Thanks very much. <laughs>